Hello, and welcome to Keep It Classical. Today, we're going to talk about the rise of secular music during the Renaissance. We've been talking a lot about church music in the previous episodes, and to be fair, there's a lot of church music being written during the Renaissance. However, we do need to shed some light on the increasing volume of music being written and performed outside of church walls. Let's get started. For our purposes, we're going to talk about secular music as music that is written without a religious function and without church patronage. Secular music has obviously been around since the dawn of mankind, but at least after the Dark Ages, secular music has varied in quantity as well as quality. One aspect to remember about music written during this time period is that patronage is everything and it had a huge correlation to quality. Who was paying for the music to be written? The vast majority of composers had church positions, and much of their output was for furnishing the music of those churches. Secular music was still being written and performed, both in folk idioms as well as classical idioms. Royalty would also hire musicians to furnish their lives with music, but not at the same volume as the church was producing. But as trade routes between Europe and Asia began to increase and grow in prosperity, the nobility and merchant class began to grow richer and richer. With this newfound wealth came disposable income and a desire to spend money recreationally and as a status symbol. As many of these trade routes went through Italy, the Italians had the highest purchasing power as well as the highest demand for art and music. The Medici family in Florence, the Sforzas in Milan, the Estes in Ferrara, and the Gonzagas in Mantua were some of the most influential in Italy. These families had coin to spend, and spend they did, like it was going out of style. Not only were they hiring artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, but also composers like Josquin, Isaac, and Arcadelt. So let's talk a little bit about the development of secular music. Different areas in Europe had different regional styles and characteristics of songs and other genres. These were composed in the vernacular where they originate. In France, they developed the chanson. In Spain, the viencico. In Germany, the lead. In Italy, the frottola, and eventually the madrigal and in England, which they called madrigals as well. In many ways, the distinction between these genres is purely the language being used, but language can have a strong influence on a musical genre's development and overall character. Let's start with a chanson, which is one of the original forms that inspired the others. Because the word chanson has been used to define so many different styles of music over the centuries, it's tough to use it in any specific way. After all, the word chanson literally translates to song. But for our purposes, we'll just say that the chanson is a secular genre in the French language that is sometimes a single voice with accompaniment, and other times for multiple polyphonic voices. For a time, these chansons had very prescribed forms that later will become more free and nuanced. Let's listen to an example of a chanson by Josquin. Mm -hmm.
Italy's development of their secular music followed pretty closely with the chanson. After all, most of the composers being hired in Italy were French and Flemish. They understood the chanson intimately, so it makes sense that when they were commissioned to compose secular music in Italian, that they resembled the measured and prescribed chanson that they were composing in France. As more Italians began writing secular music, they looked to some of their best poets, including Petrarch, whose poetry inspired them to loosen up on the forms, which allowed them to give further emphasis to the text and reinforce the rhetoric. This form will eventually be known as a madrigal. In Germany, the lead was the most prevalent form of secular song. While these began to develop around the middle of the 1400s, it wasn't until the 1500s that the lead began to become more prolifically composed. German lead would very often borrow folk tunes and other popular melodies and have them in the tenor part, leading to some of them being called tenor lead. Eventually, as more influence came from France and Flanders, these leads became more and more like the imitative polyphony from those regions. Something else that distinguishes German Lied was that they very quickly took advantage of the newly invented printing press, and German Lied became one of the most quickly distributed genres of music in Europe. Let's listen to a Lied composed by Heinrich Fink. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about the Viencico. These are the secular songs of Spain that began to develop around the early 1500s. Besides being written in Spanish, what makes this genre interesting are the sometimes unpredictable rhythms that can be encountered, as well as what appears to be a strong connection to instrumental doubling and accompaniment. Let's listen to an example of a Viencico by Encina. <laughs> Oh, this is so free. 
again, this isn't the birth of secular music, but it is an exciting time when secular music's volume increases and finds new artistic heights. And this budding form of secular music will lead to some truly astonishing developments in music to come soon. While sacred music has represented religious devotion, secular music now celebrates the growing humanism of the times. If sacred music celebrates God, then secular music celebrates humanity. That's all for now. Next time, we'll talk about the Protestant Reformation and how it almost killed polyphony. If you like this video, consider watching one of my other videos about the Renaissance or about the birth of polyphony. Until next time, keep it classical.